Hey, I'm Diana Taurasi from the Phoenix Mercury, and you're listening to the Three Point Conversion Radio. D, just, I mean, how's your hip? We haven't seen you in a week or two playing, so how's the hip feeling? And Sue, I mean, how's this game going to go tomorrow? I mean, you've played it in 12 of these. Is this going to be a typical all-star game, or is it to, hey, let's get ready for the Olympics and, and more serious than normal? Yeah, I'm feeling good. I'm trending in the right direction. Um, yeah, I mean, I think this is similar, more similar to the times we've played the All-Stars with the USA team versus when it's like a full-on All-Star team where both sides um, are just WNBA All-Stars. So it'll be more similar to that. We're still, you know, we just had a, a practice. We're training. We're getting ready. So tomorrow we'll try to do some of the stuff that we learned today and also have fun putting on a good show. All right, next, Thanks. Michelle Vopel, go ahead, please. Yeah, if, if both of you maybe have some thoughts on this, so much of this is extremely familiar to you two and, and some of the other vets, but you have the first timers, and I wondered if you could give some thoughts on on that, just like how you'll help them, and and then is it sort of refreshing to, to see this through their eyes a little bit? You mean like in general or as it pertains to the All-Star game? Just in general with the national team. Um, yeah, I mean, every, every Olympic experience, there's, there's first timers. And what's interesting, I think about this one is this is an unprecedented Olympics. You know, usually we could sit here and talk about, um, helping them out, you know, Hey, listen, we're going to processing. This is what processing light is like. And Hey, listen, when we travel and we get there, this is what this is like. And you've got credentialed and you'll do this and you'll do that. We don't even know what to expect. <laughs> we don't even know what hotel we're staying yeah, in like, Tokyo. We don't know what it's going to be like. Um, so, or, or we might say something like, oh, make sure you check out other events. Like you want to make sure you enjoy the Olympics. Um, basketball is a big part of it. Winning a gold medal is a big part of it. But you want to maybe, you know, check out the city, check out other events. That's not the case. So I think for all of us, this is um, going to be a new, unique experience. Obviously, when we get on the court, if you want to uh, add to it. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think... Um, you know, like anything, you have to go through it. You have to learn um, from watching the older players. And I think Don said it today in, in the huddle is we have, a, we have a big chunk of this team that's new, but at the same time, we have a lot of people with myself and Sue, Tina, Sill, the coaching staff that, you know, they've been to uh, numerous Olympics. So I think um, all that experience kind of trickles down day by day. And, uh, and I think we'll go from there. All right, next question will come from Jeff Metcalf. Jeff, if you would, please. And you're going to be followed by Barbara Barker. So, Diana, um, is it possible to get you to elaborate any more about what you've been going through with the hip injury? And, and are you going to play in the All-Star game? I, I mean, I, I got back from uh, the, the sternal fracture, felt good. And, uh, you know, I had a little bit of a setback in practice with uh, it's just the hip uh, pretty much a hit pointer, um, and I probably won't play. Uh, my goal is to, to be ready for the Olympics, and, you know, uh, preparation is, is key. So at this point, I think in my career, being ready for, for Tokyo is, is what's best for, for our team and, and me. So, um, you know, I'm taking it day by day. I'm getting better, and uh, I'll be fine once uh, the real games start. Jeff, thanks. Barbara Barker, you're up, and you're going to be followed by Cassandra Negley. Uh, hey, you guys, can you just talk about uh, what it means to be, this is for the Olympics, to be going for five. It's a record for both you guys and the fact that you've always been together and what that's been like. I mean, I, we, we talk about it all the time. We're asked this question a lot. And, um, you know, it's not often you get to do what you love with, with people you really care about and you have a great friendship with, uh, you know, beyond the court. And, um, you know, we've We've been able to do it um, together every step of the way. Um, and, and there's uh, this confidence and this trust factor that you have when you're on the court and you're going into an Olympics uh, with one goal. And, uh, you know, I think we, we share the same sentiment. We, we wouldn't want any, anyone else in, in, in these chairs but, but us. So, um, you know, there's, there's a great feeling behind it. And, uh, you know, we're lucky. All right, thank you, Barbara. Cassandra, you're up, and you're going to be followed by Akiko Yamawaki. It's Cassandra. Ron, you put me a little bit on the spot here. I was kind of just listening in. Um, you guys have been around for a while. This is the first time we're going to see this for All-Star break, playing the, the WNBA All-Stars. 
what does this mean for, it's really an obnoxious question, but what does this mean for the game to be able to see this in a year where we're seeing basketball grow on the women's side? What do you mean? This is the first time that we're seeing Team USA play the All-Stars, like the WNBA All-Star team in an All-Star week. Oh, we've actually, we've like, done this before. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've done this before. And so, and it's every year we've done it and I'm sure it'll be the same. It's, it's fun. It's a great way for the USA team to um, get ready. It's a great way to prepare for us. Um, it's also a great way to showcase the top talent. You know, the national team is, is 12 of the top players, obviously. And so is the WNBA side of it, the all-stars. So I think it's just 24 of the top players going out there. And like I said, one side's going to be preparing for something, but all in all, we'll hopefully put on a good show. To be, oh, thank think, you. to be clear, like, I know this isn't the first time, but it's the first time what, that we're seeing it in this format. All right, Akiko Yamawaki, you'll be followed by <laughs> Chantel Jennings. Akiko. That's incorrect. <laughs> uh, yeah, this question to uh, Sue. Um, how meaningful is it to both of you and Megan to go into Tokyo and uh, represent the country? Um, yeah, it is meaningful to us. I think it's um, it's special to go through an experience like heading to the Olympics and you know to do it um, alongside alongside somebody you know who you're with makes it even more special. It's just the fact that we're going to have a shared experience. It's it's unique and it's something that we'll remember forever. Um, I think more than anything, you know, the, the special part has been in the lead up, right? In the preparation, we, you know, we work out together in the off season, we help each other. So um, it's, it's nice to see all of that pay off. I, I know we're both very happy and proud of one another. Thank you very much. <laughs> hey. Diana, you kind of touched on this earlier in terms of like going to the Olympics, it'll be a different experience just because of COVID. Don said earlier that the more Olympics you go to, you kind of learn how to quote, trim the fat. Um, and you're like focused on the metal. There's less sort of the other experiences, but I'm curious, does the fact that there is going to sort of be less outside of the games itself do something for these younger players in terms of their longer mindset and being prepared for future Olympics and, and sort of that mental aspect? I mean, we've talked about it a lot. It's just going to be a different type of setting that we're in. And I think, um, you know, obviously playing in the bubble in the WNBA has kind of um, prepared all of us to be in that, you know, mindset of it's really just your team, your delegation, and we're there to to really do one thing, and that's to compete at the highest level and, and to win a gold medal. So I think um, that might be an advantage for us in, 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 a, in, in some ways. Um, where, you know, there's not going to be fans and um, the setting will be a little bit the same. So um, if anything, that might might help us a little bit. All right. Thank you. Kelly Cohn, you're up. And then Alex Azy. Kelly. Hi, guys. Kelly Cohn with ESPN. Um, I'm wondering what the both of you think the league's priority should be uh, moving forward in the next few years. Um, like in what ways? Like just kind of like where the league stands right now, just kind of, you know, growth changes. Obviously, I know travel is like a big thing. Everyone talks about taking commercial flights, but I guess just, you know, the those types of priorities. Yeah, I mean, I actually think we've done a really good job, um, both the players, the league itself together in the last, really since the new CBA got, got signed of, of resetting things and kind of establishing what we're or are the priorities and, and really starting to put those into action. Um, you know, the thing you learn in these processes is it doesn't happen overnight. It really takes a lot of work. So the fact that we've already made the strides that we've made in the last year or two um, is pretty incredible. And I think we're on the right path. Would I love to see, you know, you know, more strides made? You brought up travel. Sure, yeah. of course. Would I love to see more corporate sponsorship? Sure, of course. But we are starting to see a lot of changes in that already. You know, we've got the game changers where we've got a lot of companies that signed on. We've got new ownership, you know, coming into the league, which is bringing, um, I think, like a fresh, a fresh face and fresh ideas. So things are starting to trend. And I think we just need to continue on that path. And it all comes down to us being, you know, genuine to who we are as, as people and as players. 
Okay, cool. All right, thank you. Last one, Alex Azy, NBC. Hey, this is Alex Azzi with NBC Sports. Sue, um, I'll direct this one to you. Uh, going down memory road a little bit when you were, I think, 16 at the time, what are your memories of the 1996 Atlanta Olympics and basketball in particular? Do you, I don't know how much of it was televised, but what are your memories of that time period? <laughs> um, so my memory actually comes a little bit before the actual Olympics. Of course, I watched the Olympics. Um, you know, I remember the US winning. I remember watching the team you know, do their victory lap, carrying the flag. I remember all that. But for me, I actually got to go, they, they were on a tour the year prior leading to that moment. So I actually got go, uh, got to go see them play an exhibition game. Um, it was in Philadelphia at the Palestra and my AAU coach like took a bunch of us, was like, the national team's playing, let's go. And that was, you know, I, I kind of look back on that and I think I was like 14, 15 years old and it really was my first like see it be it moment. Um, I got to see Jen AZ live and, you know, we look alike. So it literally was a see it be it moment. Cause it was like, Oh, like here's this player We're kind of the same size, same build, like, and she's able to do it. And remember there was no WNBA. So for us in that, in that time frame, that generation, you were really looking to the Olympics as the ultimate goal, as the end all be all, there was no professional league. So that was it. So for me, that's what that you know, it ended up being the 96 Olympic team, but it really was the, the 95, 96 national team when they went on that year tour. That's what that kind of time frame represents to me. It was the first time it really put it on the map. All right, thanks everybody. Stay with us. We have our two Washington mystics coming up, Ariel Atkins Hello, and Tina Charles. <laughs>